Hello, and welcome to Shoe Sports Report. I'm Gino Ganello. And I'm Cara Levine. We had a lot of Sacred Heart sports this past week, from senior days to men's and women's lacrosse kicking off their 2017 season. That's right, Gino. Sacred Heart's women's basketball team had quite the send-off to their four seniors as they celebrated senior day before their last home game of the regular season. Adesha Williams, Hannah Kimmel, Kelsey Castro, and Shelby Hickey came out with their friends and family to be honored for their great achievements during their time here at Sacred Heart. The positive energy from Senior Day rolled over to the game as the Pioneers looked for revenge on Central Connecticut State University. Starting off, the Blue Devils ended the first quarter on a great one, run of 8-1, leaving the score 19-18. However, Shu took over with great performances from Tykira Carter, Aaron Stork, and Katherine Haynes to bring Shu into halftime with a 36-28 lead. The second half was all Sacred Heart as they continued to pull ahead as Haynes hit her fifth double-double of the season. When it came to the fourth quarter, Sacred Heart was in foul trouble, which gave CCSU a little bit of a break. However, that was not stopping Shu's fight to win. This includes Shelby Hickey, who picked up her first career double-double with 12 points and 10 rebounds. Shu dominated as they took the 82-61 win, earning a spot in the NEC tournament and moving to 10-3. and the Pioneers moved on to play St. Francis Brooklyn this past Monday night in a thrilling double overtime game. This game fell into double overtime as the Pioneers battled to the very last second. During the first quarter, everyone knew this game was going to go back and forth with both teams wanting to win. But Saint, and, however, St. Francis Brooklyn took the first quarter 11-10. Sacred Heart came back plowing through the second quarter with the help of Hannah Kimmel taking the lead at half 27-20. In the third quarter, however, the Terriers pushed hard and cut Shu's lead down to 12. Adesh Williams, Takira Carter, and Katherine Haynes all stepped up when they were needed. At 2 minutes and 23 seconds remaining in regulation, Carter hit a 3 to put Shu ahead. The Terriers caught up, ending regulation at 50 apiece, sending the game into overtime. The first three minutes of OT were scoreless until the Terriers made a right-hand hook from under the basket. With only five seconds left on the clock, Aaron Sork nailed a jumper, tying it once again and sending the game into a second overtime. These two teams never lost their energy as the score went back and forth until Carter swished her 4-3 of the game and she came on top 61-58. With this win, Shu is now tied for first place in the NEC with Robert Morris at 11-3. The Pioneers will be heading to LIU Brooklyn this Saturday, so be sure to catch them on NEC Front Row. Now, Gino, let's keep it up on, let's keep it up on the court for some men's hoops. Absolutely, Cara. The men's basketball team stayed home this weekend as they welcomed St. Francis Brooklyn to town last Thursday. Pitt Center was packed for the annual Pack the Pit Day as the Pioneers kept it close through the first 10 minutes of the game before taking an 8-point lead off of two Quincy McKnight free throws with just 5 minutes left in the first half. McKnight would then score 5 of the Pioneers' next 8 points to send Shu into the half, up 39-29. The Pioneers would come out hot in the second half, knocking down three three-pointers to take a 13-point lead just with just four, minutes, or just 4 minutes into the half. The lead was too much of a deficit for the Terriers as junior forward Mario Matasovic and sophomore guard Quincy McKnight dominated the second half to help the Pioneers to an 80-65 win. McKnight and Matasovic led Shu in scoring with 25 and 19 points respectively. The Pioneers would remain home for senior day as Central Connecticut State University came to coach by court on Saturday, February 11th. Cole Walton and Matei Buovats were the honorary seniors before the game as they walked out in celebration of their, achievements, of their achievements here at Sacred Heart. Pioneers would fall behind early until finally tying it up at 10 off a three-pointer from sophomore guard Sean Hone with 14 minutes to go in the first half. That's when Shu started to pull away as they took double-digit leads multiple times in half before going into the break with a nine-point lead. The Pioneers would not look back from there as they caught fire from behind the arc, shooting a staggering 67% as a team in the second half. And an all-around team effort would help the Pioneers to a 77-62 victory and their fourth win in a row, though the longest of the season. Shu had three players in double figures for the night, with Sean Hohen leading the team with 17. The Pioneers are home once, once more as they take on Fairleigh Dickinson University in an important conference game on Thursday, February 16th. 
For all of us here at Shoe Sports Report, we want to congratulate the six seniors that took part on Senior Day for their accomplishments and wish them the best of luck in their future endeavors. Gino, the men's ice hockey team is rounding out its season, but the amount of hard-fought games are in no sort shortage. That's right, Kara. The men's ice hockey team had some very close battles this past weekend against the top competitor as they welcomed Canisius for a weekend series at Webster Bank Arena this past weekend. On Friday night, Shu got off to an early 1-0 lead thanks to, St to Stephen Ladin's first period goal. After a scoreless second period, the Pioneers scored once again 20 seconds into the third as senior Evan Jasper extended the 2-0 lead. Kanisha slow, slowly chipped back into the game, collecting a rebound at 453 and an ex extra attacker goal at 1841 in the third to tie the game at 2-2. Shu picked up the point as they played in their third straight overtime contest. On a Saturday afternoon, where both teams were slow to score, taking a 0-0 game into the first intermission. Jordan Manila would break the game wide open with his 15th goal of the season. The first place Golden Griffins caught fire after that though, scoring three goals in a two minute span for the 3-1 lead. Jeff Carroll netted the power play goal to ice the Canisius rally, but the Griffs would, take, would attack on two goals early in the third to take the 5-2 lead. Fresh and Austin McKilmery recorded the Pioneer's second power play goal of the afternoon a little more than halfway through the third. Shu continued to rally as Liam Clare picked up the extra attacker goal at 18.48 in the third to cut the deficit to 5-4. Canisius would take a two-goal lead once again late in the third, and Ehrlich Dirksen fired home another extra attacker goal for the Pioneers at 19.47 to make the game 6-5, but, but Shu couldn't finish the rally to tie the game. Pioneers have a home-and-home -home series against Bentley this weekend. Shu will honor their 10 seniors on Saturday night prior to the 7 o'clock start. We'll have more shoe sports coming your way, but first we have an exclusive, uh, an exclusive women's lacrosse season preview with our very own Aaron Burrell sitting with women's lacrosse head coach Laura Cook. Thanks, Gino. I'm here with head coach Laura Cook. Thanks for joining us today, coach. Thanks for having me. Yeah, last year your offense generated just over 10.5 goals a game, which was good for fourth in the NEC. Uh, you also returned four of your five top scorers. How do you look to continue that fast-paced offense in 2017? Well, our offense got so much better last year that we're looking to even improve, um, you know, above that. You know, obviously we finished fourth in the conference last year, so we are looking for our offense to be a big key component to winning that um, NEC championship this year. Right. Now, you also returned all NEC first team selection, Caitlin Delaney, who was second in the country last season in ground balls and fourth in caused turnovers uh, per game. What strides do you expect out of her this season, uh, and which is her senior season? You know, Kate's a game changer. Um, you know, how she plays is how the team plays. Uh, so we expect big things from her. You know, it's her senior year. It's, it's the, her last go around. Um, I know her and the other seniors who are, you know, the, the key of our team uh, really want this this year. So they're really putting in the effort and, and really being great role, role models to the rest of the team. All right. In conference play last season, uh, your team played several close games decided by four goals or less. Uh, what does that do for your team's mindset going into this year, knowing you have what it takes to grind it out in league play? You know, I think a lot of it was last year, you know, losing in that sudden death um, in the NEC semifinals. I think that left a little bit of a bitter taste in our mouth. Um, I think that has only led to more experience for us in those tight games. Um, so I think in those tight games, we're going to be a lot better this year. Now, last season, your team finished fourth in the conference and went to the NEC tournament for the first time since 2012. Uh, with the preseason polls placing you in that fourth spot again, what can fans expect uh, when they come out in the 2017 season? Well, I think, you know, we've set our sights high and we really want to win the Northeast Conference Championship this year. I think we were so close last year um, that the girls have put in so much effort. I think we're going to be, you know, very similar to where we were last year, but, um, you know, hopefully get over that hump. And the girls have been working hard on and off the field, and we're just really excited for this upcoming season. All right, well, we wish you all the best, and that's all the time we have. So thank you for joining us, Coach, and stopping by and giving us a preview of what's to come for the women's lacrosse team in 2017. Thanks for having me. All right. Now we'll send it over for this week's Update Corner with Adam Chambers. Adam? Thanks, Aaron, and good luck, Coach, with your 2017 season. Let's start off this week's Update Corner with Equestrian, as they had a busy two-event weekend starting off Friday with a Western competition. Shu finished as a reserve high point team against UConn, with Abigail Williams as a reserve high point rider. Abigail Williams, Michelle Johnson, and Victoria Caputo took their first and respective events. 
another three pioneers placed in the top three of their respective events. Equestrian then took to their second event Saturday as they finished as a high point team with 37 points to UConn's 30, 35 points to UConn's 37 points in the hunt seat competition. Jackie Brown and Isabel Rodriguez took first in their respective fences sections as Jessica Shallow, Michaela Fritch, and Emily Spellman placed first in their respective flat sections. Valerie Stein placed first in the advanced walk trot center. Collectively, 15 pioneers placed in the top three of their events. Equestrian will be back Saturday the 18th at the IHSA Western at Mount Holyoke. The Sacred Heart wrestling team took on Brown University and picked up three victories. Gerard Daly picked up the late fall in the third period to tie it up at six. Paul Klee picked up a 13-4 major decision to put the Pioneers up 10-6. Sacred Heart maintained as the lead as Alex Harnsberger picked up the third straight victory for Shu with a 7-2 decision. The duel stood 13-6 with the Pioneers ahead, but Brown could respond with a six straight wins to close it out, 29-13. The Pioneers will hit the road Friday, February 17th to take on VMI at 7 p.m. and close out the air against George Mason on the 19th. Sacred Heart women's tennis team traveled up to Army West Point for a match against Black Knights. Shoot fell 7-0 on Friday night. Freshman Brian Loria fell in a contested first singles match, dropping a 7-5 tiebreaker in set one. She would fall 6-4 in set two. Freshman Adrian Alfonso also fell a 7-5 -5 tiebreaker in the third singles match. The Pioneers are back in action on Friday as they travel down to Philadelphia against St. Joseph's. Sacred Heart Bowling had quite the outing against some of the top teams in the nation during the SFA Jacks Invitational this past weekend. Shu plays 17th overall, while Lara Hoffman plays 18th individually with a 204.8 average bowling. Bowling rolls into Elmwood Park, New Jersey, Saturday the 25th for the Northeast, Con Northeast Conference meet. Sacred Heart Women's Ice Hockey faced URI this past weekend for a two-game home series. Shu took the first game 4-0 four, four and the second game 4-1. The Pioneers gear up for a home and home this weekend against Post University starting Friday the 17th. Sacred Heart Swimming and Diving will be competing in the four-day NEC Championships at MIT, which started late last night. You can watch the games live on necfrontrow.com or visit www.sacredheartpioneers.com for the day-to-day -day updated results. Next week's Update Corner will have the final results from the championships. That's all we have this, this week for this week's Updates Corner. Let's send it back to Kara with some men's volleyball. Thanks, Adam. The Sacred Heart men's volleyball team started off EIVA play this Friday against Charleston. The game started off in the Golden Eagles' favor, but the Pioneers took over from there. Sacred Heart dominated the first two sets, winning 25-17 and 25-13. Charleston fought hard in the third set to compete with Shu as the Golden Eagles led the Pioneers early. But with great back-to-back -back blocks assists from Emerson Womans and Doug Zemma, Shu kept ahead 8-6. The Golden Eagles rallied to tie the game back up 12-12 and kept a back-and-forth pace with Shu through the third set. Both teams fought hard, but Charleston finally got outpaced as the Pioneers took the third and final set of the match, 26-24. This was a great first EIVA win for Shu, and that rush continued as they took on Charleston again on Saturday. Sacred Heart took the first set 25-16, however, the next two sets were a bit more challenging with the Golden Eagles stepping into it. The second set could have gone either way as each team never broke more than a three-point margin. That intensity, with the gold, that intensity, the Golden Eagles continued to work hard, tying it at 18. But a kill from Chris DeLucy brought Shu ahead and they put away the set 25-21. The third set was another close one, but Emerson Womans was on fire and Charleston could not catch up and Shu finished them off 25-20. Womans led the team with 11 kills and Eduardo Zardo had 36 assists. Shu improves to 9-1 overall and 2-0 in EIVA. They will be hitting the road this weekend for a pair of road games as they take on San Francis U and Penn State. Wow, Kara, the men's volleyball team is on quite a run right now. What is that, like six in a row for them? That is six, Gino. Hopefully they can carry that momentum into this weekend. 
The men's lacrosse team has kicked off their 2017 season on Valentine's Day. Why don't you get us caught up with their home opener? Absolutely, Kara. It was quite the home opener as the men's lacrosse team hosted Stony Brook at Campus Field this past Tuesday. After a 2-0 start in the first quarter, Sacred Heart rallied back to take the lead with a three-goal run ending the first 3-2. Sacred Heart would carry the lead over into the second as they scored another goal extending their lead by two, but the Seawolves would go on a three-goal run of their own, taking back the lead midway through the second. The Pioneers did not falter there though as they immediately went on a 4-0 run to finish out the second quarter 8-5, leading the Seawolves. Midway through the third quarter, Stony Brook tied the game at 8, and through the rest of the third and into the fourth quarter, both teams would trade back and forth goals as time wound down. With a minute 30 left in regulation, Sacred Heart's Julian Garitano tied the game up at 11, and Shu looked to hold off the Seawolves and force overtime, but the following faceoff face was won by Stony Brook, and with less than a minute left in the game, the Seawolves scored taking the lead and preventing two last chance shots by the Pioneers to take the win 12-11. Garitano led the Pioneers with five goals as Brian Massey led Shu with three assists. Men's lacrosse heads to U.S. lacrosse in Baltimore February 18th as they face off against the Paladins of Furman University. Hopefully the men's lacrosse team can gain some early momentum with the road win this weekend. It is still early, so once they find their rhythm, they'll get things rolling, Gino. Now the women's and men's fencing team have certainly found their stride as both headed to Tufts this past weekend for a Northeast Fencing Conference meet. The Sacred Heart men's fencing team opened the day with a convincing win over Boston University 23-4. The Foyle and Epi squads dominated the Terriers 16-2. The next duel was against UMass with a Pioneers trio of James Turner, Julian Millet, Tyler Endy went nine, and Tyler Endy went 9-0 and in foil, eventually beating UMass 22-5. Shu kept the momentum going as they, as they had an easy win over Dartmouth 21-6 with the help of the Epi squad, Dante Sinento, Cody Richard, Matthew Lowell, and Stephen Frapiri going 9-0 in the match. The Pioneers went 22-5 in the win over Tufts with foil, posting another 9-0 record. The only loss came from Vassar, 17-10. The women's fencing team opened their day with a win over the Terriers of Boston University, 21-6. Julia Green went 3-0 in Sabre against the Terriers, while the rest of the Sabre and Foil went 14-1. The next duel was against UMass, where the Epi squad went 8-1 and took the win over the Minutemen, 22-5. The Big Green of Dartmouth battled close against Shu, but the Pios came out 15-12 with the key wins in Sabre from Hassoni, Austin, McKenna, Lampieri, and Julia Green. The Pioneers' next matchup was against the Jumbos of Tufts University. The Jumbos gave it all, and they could, and they could, uh, I'm sorry, the Jumbos gave it all, and they went against Shu, but they came out on top 14-13. The only loss of the day was to Vassar 14-13. At the end of the day, the Pioneers bounced back to defeat Smith College 18-9. Bailey Partridge, Julia Capullo, and Gabrielle Petrie helped lead the Pioneers to a victory going 8-1 in foil. Both teams will be back in action this February 15th as they travel to Columbia University for this historical meet. That's all the shoe sports we had this week. Be sure to check out all of Sacred Heart's action coming up starting tonight with men's basketball. For all of us here at Shoe Sports Report, I'm Carol Levine. Have a great weekend.